friends, welcome back to lecture 3 in the stroke imaging series. In this lecture, we shall discuss about the role of conventional MRI sequences in diagnosis of acute infarct. So what do you mean the conventional sequences? They include the T1, the T2 weighted, the flare, as well as the post contrast sequences. First, let's talk about flare. What do you mean by flare? Flare is a fluid attenuating inversion recovery sequence which means that you are going to obtain a T2-weighted sequences in which the fluid signals are suppressed. So in previous lecture we have seen that the first change to be detected in acute infarct is what is in the diffusion-weighted images as early as 20 minutes. So when will you, so the next question will be when will you get change in the flare sequence? It requires minimum of 6 hours to detect changes of acute infarct in flare sequence. Now answering that question, let's see what are you going to look for in flare sequence. So given to you is a picture of flare images. You can see that the fluid signal within the ventricle. CSF is suppressed. So this is a flare sequence. Now what do you see here? If you look carefully, you can see hyperintensity involving the left side of the brain parenchyma. Where precisely? It is involving the cortex as well as the cortex of gray matter as well as the white matter. And it is following a territorial pattern. Okay. Now, along with hyperintensity, what do I get? I do get mass effect. How do you say there is mass effect? There is effacement of the cortical cells. These are the cortical cells. But where are they here? They are not seen here. So, one of the features of acute infarct in flare images is hyperintensity, which is involving the cortex and white matter following a territorial pattern associated with mass effect, okay? This is one feature that you are going to look for in flare sequences. Of course, do not interpret images in isolation. You have to correlate with the clinical symptoms. So, there can be many causes of weakness of a patient. If it is sudden onset, you are thinking in terms of a vascular event, okay? In that appropriate clinical setting, you get this. This is the feature of acute impact, okay? Now, let's see the second sign. What do you expect? So again given to you is a flare image. What do you get in flare image? Uh, looking carefully, you can see arrows marked towards the sylvian fissure. So what runs in the sylvian fissure? The branch of MCA runs in the sylvian fissure. So how do normal vessels appear on flare sequences? They should be seen as signal void. Signal void means black areas. So the physical principle be behind it, it's a long thing. We shall discuss it at some other point. So you should know that all the intracranial vessels should appear as low voids or black areas. For example, look at the superior sagittal sinus. It is black. Then look at the contralateral sylvian fissure. What do you see? You don't see any hyperindent structures. Whereas in the white side, what can you spot? You can see hyperindent vessel within. See? Whitish, whitish, whitish. So what does it show that? This is, a, this is known as hyperintense vessel sign. What is it called? It is known as hyperintense vessel sign. So what are the reasons why you get? One reason is because there can be it depicts a thrombus within the vessel. Just like you get hyperdense MCA sign CT. Then what is the other cause? There is a clot occluding the vessel. So what happens to the cerebral blood flow? The cerebral blood flow will decrease. So it depicts the slow flow within the vessels. So these are the two important causes why you get hyperintense vessel sign in acute infarct in which sequence flare sequence. And again remember to get change in flare sequence minimum 6 hours should have passed after the event of insect. Okay. Now let's take another scenario. Okay. As I said, when you're suspecting acute infarct, what is the first you're going to go for? MRI stroke protocol. The stroke sequence of choice is diffusion weighted image. So I have obtained diffusion weighted image. So, but naturally you are going to proceed with other sequences also. So after getting diffusion weighted sequence, I am going to obtain for flare sequence. So look at a patient with two images provided. One is a diffusion weighted image. That is, this is what? This is the ADC map provided to you. And following that, I have taken the flare sequence. Now let me read these two films. So what do you see in ADC map? In ADC map, I am getting hypo intensity. Okay falling signal which is actually following a territorial pattern involving the cortex and white matter and corresponding image and diffusion weighted image is bright. 
So I call it diffusion restriction. So there is change present in the diffusion weighted sequence. Now I'm going to obtain flare image. Now what do I see in flare image? Am I seeing hyperintensity? No. Am I seeing uh, hyperintense vessel cell? Again, no. So I'm not seeing any change in flare. Flare is looking apparently normal. So what do you infer from this? We know there is diffusion restriction. And in the appropriate clinical setting of a patient presenting with acute onset of weakness, you're looking for or you're thinking about in terms of infer. So diffusion weighted sequence, when we look at the change, as early as 20 minutes. Now, in flare, when should you expect change? Minimum of 6 hours. Minimum of 6 hours. So what does it mean? There is change in ADC but no change in flare. So it means that the, the insult is less than 6 hours. But as per recent studies, it, it is said that if diffusion weighted and flare mismatch, why do I call it mismatch? There is change in diffusion but no change in flare. So if there is mismatch between diffusion and flare, it can give you assurance that the stroke is less than 6 hours and as per some studies less than 4.5 hours. So are we interested in this value? Yes. This will give us reassurance that you can go for thrombolysis because it is within the window period. Okay, that is the significance of comparing these two images. Now let's take, take an opposite scenario. For a patient presenting with weakness, I have obtained a diffusion weighted sequence. So reading the diffusion weighted sequence, am I seeing any hyperintensity? No. Now I have to do what always remember, go for ADC also. But also no changes seen in ADC. So diffusion weighted, no change. Now I am proceeding with further sequence and I am going for flare. What do I see in flare? Yes, obviously there is change in flare. What do I see here? There is hyperintensity hyper on the left side. Where is it involving? It is involving the cortex. Okay. And is it territorial based? Yeah, somewhat. It is somewhere belonging to the AC territory. So this much I am sure. So I am having change in flare, but no change in diffusion weighted image. So when you are getting such a scenario, you have to go back and recheck the clinical scenario. That is whether it is the clinical features are, is it suggestive of a vascular event? Is it acute onset? So remember, whenever you are getting change in flare without change in diffusion, you have to look for some other cause other than acute infarct. Keep this point in mind. Because most of the pathologies in flare will appear hyperintense. Beaten neoplasm, it can again be hyperintense. So some may, some may be asking, can a neoplasm involve cortex? Yes, there are neoplasms isolated involving cortex. So always keep this thing in mind. If there is no change in diffusion weighted imaging, but you get a change in flare image in a patient presenting with weakness, you have to look for causes other than infarct. So what do you do? You have to obtain multiple sequences and look for changes in all of them and correlate clinically. And this point highlights that always interpret images along with appropriate clinical scenario. Okay. Now let's move over to the next sequence, T2 weighted image. So first question, when can you expect change in T2 weighted images? So it takes minimum of 8 hours. So if it was 20 minutes for diffusion weighted and 6 hours for flare for T2 weighted images, it takes minimum of 8 hours to depict change. Now question, what are you going to expect in the T2 weighted image? Again, given a figure to you, what do you see? What do I see? I see a hyper intensity. Where is it involving? The left sided hemisphere. Where precisely? Involving the cortex as well as the white matter. And is it territorial based? Yes, it is territorial based. Now, again, as I said, correlate with clinical symptoms. Is the patient having acute vascular event? Yes, acute onset? Yes, so you are thinking of infarct. But always remember, you have to correlate with diffusion weighted sequence also because you are going to acquire diffusion enemies. So there is a corresponding diffusion restriction. And whenever you are interpreting diffusion weighted, you have to go for ADC also. I have not provided ADC map here. So I am getting diffusion restriction along with that, I am seeing this thing. So what does it mean? It means there is an infarct, acute event, acute infarct. Second sign that you have to look for. What do you see in this image? This is a T2 weighted image. Again, it is just like a counterpart of flare image because what is flare and T2? What is the basic difference? In flare, you are suppressing the fluid signal. So whatever you expect in flare, the same thing you expect in T2 weighted image. Hyper intensity in flare, hyper intensity in T2. Now coming at the what, it, what was the second sign I described in flare? It was hyper intense vessel sign. So corresponding, what do you expect here? Uh, let's look at the image again. How do you see vessels in flare? It should be black. So how do you how should you see vessels in T2 weighted? It should be black, flow void. So periosagittal sinus. 
black. This is the region of circle of beliefs. Let me take one by one. This is the left MCA. It is black. This is the left ACA. It is black. This is the right ACA. It is black. Look at the posterior cerebral vessels. They are black. Then what happened to my MCA on right side? It is not seen. What does it mean? There is loss of flow void. What do you call it? There is loss of flow void. So loss of flow void is an indirect sign showing that there is some abnormality with the MCA there. It is a counterpart of hyperindense vessel sign. So in T2-weighted, you get two signs you have to look for is hyperindensity involving the cortex uh, also following a territorial pattern and second sign you have to look for is loss of flow void. Okay. Now coming to T1 weighted image. So you have got diffusion restriction, you have got changes in flare, you have got changes in T2. So naturally the question comes, what should you look for in T1 weighted image? Uh, before going to the finding, you should know when can you expect change in T1 weighted image. It is as long as 8, 16 to 18 hours of onset of event only you will get change in T1 weighted image. So is it a useful sequence to diagnose INFA? No. But you should know what, what is actually happening in T1 in INFA for completion sake. Okay. So this is the T1 weighted image and this is what diffusion weighted image. What do I see in the diffusion weighted image? I see bright area. Now I have cross checked with ADC. There is foreign ADC. So I am going to call it diffusion restriction. Now what do I see in T1 weighted? I am seeing a black area. Black is in MR is known as hypo intense. So hypo intense area in T1 weighted image. So this is what you are going to expect in acute infarct. But it is not a useful sequence to diagnose acute infarct. Why? Most of the pathologies in T1 will appear hypo intense. Barring a few. Those are the specific examples. Okay. Now I am going to wonder. Uh, I am going to give contrast in such a patient. Diagnosed with acute infarct. And I am going to look for what do you get in acute infarct in post contrast sequence. So what is, what is the contrast that you are going to give? You are going to give gadolinia. And how are you going to give? Intravenously. And what is the image that you are going to obtain? Post contrast T1 sequence with fat suppression. So this is what you are going to obtain. So let's see how an impact will appear. So I have given you three images. Let's move from left to right. What is the image on left? This is a flare sequence. Okay. Why do I see in flare sequence? I see I see sub, subtle hyperintensity. Okay, I see subtle hyperintensity. Now I am going to diffusion weighted image. What am I seeing in diffusion weighted imaging? I am seeing bright area, hyperindent signal. So what should I do? I should cross check with ADC to ensure that it is due, true diffusion restriction. So I have cross check. There is low signal in ADC. So that is diffusion restriction. Now let me go, go over to this image. What is this image? This is a post contrast T1 weighted image with fat suppression. Now compare right and left side. What are you seeing? These are the cortical cell cell. There are few vessels in cortical cell cell. This is a vessel, this is a vessel, this is a vessel. Now I am going to compare the opposite side. Again I am seeing a cortical cell cell also here. Yes, I am seeing few vessels here, here. But what happened to area? Compared to right side, this increase in the vessels in the cortical cell cell on the left side. So see the stark contrast. Right, less prominent, left side it is more prominent. What is this known as? This is known as intravascular enhancement. What is it? So this is an early sign that you look for in acute infarct in post contrast sequences. So what is the cause for this? The cause is said to be due to increased collateral vessel formation. So there is an event, acute vascular event that has occurred and body is trying to salvage it by re-establishing the perfusion by bringing out very very uh, many collaterals okay so these collaterals are seen here and it is known as intravascular enhancement so naturally a question comes when will you see it so it can be seen as seen as early as two hours but usually when it is seen it is usually seen between three to five days and remember it is never seen after seven days but never after one week because after one week what kind of enhancement are we going to see we are going to see guideform enhancement we actually discussed that in back in lecture one where we discussed about ct enhancement so by that time this intravascular enhancement might have disappeared but an important point that you should remember that this intravascular sign is not a specific feature for acute infarct 
you get intravascular enhancement in lot of other condition inflammatory condition meningitis encephalitis so always interpret images in correlation with a clinical event okay so i am describing this as one of the imaging features that you can expect okay now let's summarize what we have learned in a nutshell first we have discussed about diffusion weighted imaging in previous lecture which can be seen as early as 20 minutes now what else can you see acute infarct in next next sequence which shows positive finding is a flare sequence what will you expect in flare sequence you can get hyper intensity as well as hyper intense vessel site that is seen as flare at that is seen as as early as 6 hours after that what will you get after that you will get t2 weighted sequences t2 weighted sequence you get 8 hours you have to wait for 8 hours to see a change what will you see you will see again hyper intensity that is following a territorial pattern involving the cortex a vascular territory and involving the cortex and what else can you see you can see loss of flow void in the vessel now post that what did, what did i say you can go for t1 weighted images but t1 weighted images will take how much time it will take minimum of 16 to 18 hours so it's not at all useful okay and what will you look for you are going to look for hypo intensity and finally what did i discuss i discuss about the post contrast t1 weighted in image what will we see we will see intravascular enhancement remember as early as 2 hours but always less than 7 days so I hope that is clear about the role of conventional sequences in diagnosing acute infarct. Now stay tuned for our next lecture which will be on the role of GRE sequences or susceptibility weighted images in acute infarct. Thank you very much.